Hello and welcome. In this video, I will create a model in IPP using the modeling perspective. So I'm logged into IPP and I'm accessing the, uh, the modeling perspective. Um, you'll notice there's a uh, profile selector. I can select between business analyst and integrator. Uh, if I select business analyst, uh, certain uh, uh, fields or element fields that are of no interest to a business analyst will be hidden uh, and integrator um, all these fields uh, will be visible. I'm going to leave this as business analyst and expand my process models. Um, the models uh, that are uh, defined um, will be listed here. I don't have any so I'm going to add one. Click the little add button. And I'm going to create a model called customer management. And I can uh, start defining um, different elements for, for this model. I can find the participants. I do need a couple participants for this particular scenario. We're going to uh, draw out a, a customer, a very simple model. It's a customer onboarding scenario. In this case, I need uh, two participants. I need a sales contact. And I need another role. Um, this is the branch manager. Okay, so now I have my participants. Um, I can click on uh, either of these, uh, and it brings up a view for the, the properties for um, for for, for the, the participant. Uh, in this case, the the uh, sales contact. I can I can actually change the name of the role here. I can enter a description and have um, other properties that I, that I can, uh, can set for the participant. Um, in this case, I want to continue on. I'd like to create. Um, the, the structure types that we'll be using in uh, in the model. I need a few. I need, um, I need one called customer. And I'll create a second one. And we'll name this country. Now for customer, this is going to be a structure type with several fields. I need First name, last name, tax ID, amount, country. So simply um, uh, clicking in a different field, um, I'm actually going to save this. I, I do want to go to country um, and create um, an enumeration or a list type of data here. I'm going to enter in the, the countries in which uh, our fictitious company does business. Uh, in North America, this will be uh, Canada, Mexico. In USA. So once I have this uh, country created, I can go back to my uh, customer structure type, um, and you'll see all of these. Uh, the data are strings. I would like to use the enumeration that I just created, and I do that just by selecting uh, from the list customer uh, management country. Okay. I'd also like to create one primitive data. And I'm going to call this manager review. And we'll just leave this as is, a primitive and a primitive type of text. I have options for Boolean number, long number, scientific, money amount, and dates. We'll just leave this as text. So I am, uh, I think I'm now ready to create the process definition. Okay, so if I right click uh, the model node and say create process, it adds uh, a new process definition. We'll, we'll name this customer onboarding. Uh, if I click customer onboarding, it opens up the, the process diagram. And here I can uh, I can uh, draw my workflow. Uh, it starts out with a default pool and a default lane. 
Um, I'm going to need an additional lane. Uh, and one of the ways I can do this is by just dragging a participant over. So now I have the default lane and I have a, a lane for my uh, branch manager. If I select the heading, it brings up the properties for that lane, in this case the default swim lane, and I can use the drop list to select a sales contact as a participant for this lane. Okay. If I click um, a, an, an empty or a blank area of the canvas, uh, I get the properties for the, uh, the process definition itself. And here you'll see the basic properties, name, description, I can set a default priority. Uh, and, and there's several other icons uh, here that I can click and these bring up uh, the other properties for, for the process definition. Uh, let's collapse this to give us a little more room to work. <coughs> and I'm going to begin uh, drawing out uh, um, our customer onboarding uh, workflow. Let's start with an event. So I click the event uh, icon in the, uh, the toolbar, drag it down, and then just click uh, to select it. From here I can use a, a flyout menu. So if I hover over um, the event, I get this flyout menu. And if I select the activity icon, I can create an activity. And then just by double clicking, I can rename this activity uh, from its default. And in this case, we want this to be uh, enter customer data. And then I can use this fly out, uh, sec the activity flyout menu to uh, create the next uh, element or, or in, in the workflow. In this case, um, after, in, after uh, the sales contact enters the customer data, I'm going to make a decision based on some of that data. And it can either be, um, and it can either go to, uh, go to a process step. or can go over here to the branch manager for review. Okay, after the manager has reviewed it, it can be processed. And, oops. and then that completes our workflow. So we finished drawing our, our, um, our sequence flow, um, so now let's add some data. Um, one of the ways we can do this is we can come to our structure type, we can drag customer on to the canvas, and notice it becomes uh, a data. Uh, so this actually creates a, a structured data. If I expand my uh, property panel back, I can rename this, we'll just call it customer, I can give it a description if I like. Here you can see that um, this, uh, this data is pointing back to this, uh, the data structure uh, customer. Okay. And we can use the flyout menu here to um, create our, our data connection. Um, we notice that uh, the data flow property panel uh, is now available where I can enter a description. I can specify whether this connection uh, is an in or an out or both. And then I have some uh, some other uh, fields that I can uh, can specify. Okay, so so what we've drawn here is is a, a process will be started. Uh, this is a manual uh, trigger. Uh, when it starts, we will um, create an activity in the inner customer data. Uh, the data we specified here or the fields will be rendered automatically in a, in, a, uh, in what we call a manual activity panel. And then any information uh, or any data values that that, uh, that the uh, uh, the sales contact enters uh, will be stored back in in, in this data the data structure. Uh, so let's continue on with our workflow. Um, one of the, the next thing we need to do is specify our transitions or sequence flow. Uh, we do this by clicking um, the sequence flow, and then we can enter. A conditioned expression 
In this case, it's customer dot amount greater than 10,000 will go to manager review. And then we'll select the second transition and we'll call this the default. So any uh, so so if the amount entered in, in this step is greater than 10,000, uh, the, the, we will create a, a manager review activity An instance. Uh, if it is less than 10,000, um, it will go directly to be processed in this process request review um, activity. Okay, so let's move on to the next step, our manager review. We'd like our branch manager to be able to see the data that was entered um, in the first step. So we'll drag our customer data onto the pallet, connect it. Um, and it's an input, we'll make it an in and an out. Uh, also, we want to use our manager review data, kind of capture what the manager, uh, what the manager's comments or what he has to officially say about um, this particular particular activity instance. We'll connect that. So once the manager review reviews a uh, request, it goes to um, the process request activity. Again, we'd like to do the same thing here. With our customer and our um, our manager review data. We'll just connect those, and there you have it. We have um, a new process definition. Um, I do need to save this. Let's click the button. That should get confirmation. This it will be saved to the um, to the IPP document repository. And now, if I click uh, the customer node, I can deploy the process or download the model. And if I download it, I can uh, then import it into Eclipse uh, and, and work on it there. But this uh, but the model is fully ready to be deployed into a uh, into an IPP runtime. This concludes the video. Thank you for watching.